future Dana here. We are trying to reach 5,000 subscribers, and when we do, in order to celebrate that milestone for our channel, we are going to do a question and answer video. So if you have a question that you would like answered, list it in the comments below and check, out, check back when we reach 5,000 subscribers for that Q&A video. Hi, Dana here. Welcome to So Learn Create. I'm glad you joined us today. And if you like our content, be sure you click the subscription button and also the bell so you get notified anytime we upload a new video. Today's project is a Christmas ornament. Christmas is not far away and these are easy and quick to make, but they use something kind of unique in the sewing world and that's a shower curtain ring. So let's get started. For today's project, the shower ring um, ornament, you'll need the following supplies. You'll need a piece of fabric that is four inches wide by 22 inches long. You'll need a shower ring. I get mine at the local Dollar Tree. You'll need some ribbon for a bow. And then if you want to put something in the middle of your ornament, you'll need some kind of small um, little decoration. And then your basic sewing supplies. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut your fabric where it's four inches wide and 22 inches long. And the easiest way to do that is um, take a piece of paper that's 11 inches long, 4 inches wide, and then mark it where you're going to put it on the fold. So you would put that pattern on your fabric with the fold at the top, fabric folded, and then when you unfold it, it will be 22 inches long. And a fat quarter piece of fabric works great for this. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to stitch our fabric and we're going to make a long tube. So we're going to fold our fabric in half long ways or hot dog style as I call it with the right sides facing out. And then we're going to clip that all the way down. And when you're working with a long piece of fabric like this, it's best to clip it or pin it all the way so that it doesn't shift on you in the when you are sewing it because it is kind of a long stitch. So now we have it clipped. Let's head to the machine. Now we're at the machine and we're going to need to sew a 5 8 inch seam allowance on this project. So we need to be able to go down the 5 8 inch on our machine. And most machines have that marked. But what I like to do, if I'm doing a long piece to help me keep it lined up, is I will take a piece of painter's tape and line it up on that line. Then when I'm sewing my project, it gives me a little bit longer guide that I can see. So now our machine is at 5 eighths of an inch when we stitch. Also, I um, forgot to show you on the mat, but I did press that fold so it's nice and flat and it's creased well, and that'll help it stitch better and not be puffy. So be sure you press it and then clip it, and then um, set your seam allowance for 5 eighths of an inch. And we're just going to start here at the end. I like to, and we're doing a straight stitch. I like to start with my needle down in my fabric, and then we're stitching all the way from one end to the other. And then that tape just helps keep it lined up. Then I'm going to back stitch just a little bit there at the end. That painter's tape also comes off easily. You can use masking tape. Just don't leave it for a long time on your machine or it will leave a residue. But it's also nice to have a piece of tape there. If I'm doing a lot of these, I can just feed one right after the other. 
So let's go back to the map. Now we've stitched all the way down our fabric and we're ready to feed it onto our shower curtain ring. Let me get all the clips off. So we're going to open our shower curtain ring and we're just going to put it one end in. I like to put the end with the post because it goes, it's a little smaller. And the tricky part is getting it right over that edge. And then you're just going to feed it on there and bunch it up. And I like to hold the other end because if you don't, it will come off and then you're feeding it on again. So you're just going to bunch it all the way around. Move it around there a little bit. And then I'm going to take my shower curtain ring and I'm going to lock it in place. And you can kind of hear it uh, snap. Then you're going to take it and you're going to fold it out so that your fabric is on the outside of your ring and you're just going to fluff the gathers to where they look the way you want them to look and you're going to at the bottom just overlap that seam and leave it loose it won't it won't matter so if you push your gathers gathers around get it the way you like it see which side you like better i kind of like this side with the snowman and then what you need to do is you can add a ribbon at the top, a bow. Um, it's really up to you at this point on how you want to decorate your uh, ornament. Now I'm going to take, I'm going to make a bow here for the top. And you can use um, whatever size ribbon you like. Just make your bow. And I'm going to just glue that in place. But before I glue that, I'm going to decide which um, ornament or other piece that I want in the center section. You could just leave it like this, and that would be fine. Or you can add something to the middle. I found these little trees, which I think are kind of fun. But I also found this piece, and I wondered how it would look if I stitched it or just glued it there. I think I like that. So I'm going to try a needle and thread and see if I can stitch that um, since it has a hole in the top of this snowflake. If I can stitch it to the top of this ring. You want your bow to be opposite your um, opening here. So you want this at the bottom and your bow other decoration at the top. So let's see if we can get this snowflake. I thought this was just kind of a fun addition. So I kind of want it one point pointing down there, the other one here. So I think if I put my needle in Just going through those loops and I painted my snowflake white you can see it was originally brown and you could paint both sides if you wanted to just put it through that top loop and then I'm just going to stitch that a couple of times and I think I'm going to leave it loose so it kind of dangles there a little bit. Go back through that hole. Leave it dangling a little bit and then I'm just going to tie it off on the back. I like to tie mine off taking a tiny stitch 
and pulling it. I'm not quite sure how to help you with that. Put it through the loop and make a double knot. And that is kind of dangling. I think that's kind of cute. And then we're just going to glue our bow. And I'm going to use Eileen's Tacky Glue. You could use hot glue if you wanted, or even Elmer's glue would probably work. Put a little dab right there in the middle. And glue our bow right there at the top. Then the last thing you need, you will need a... Um, ornament hook and you can buy these in a package at um, most places during Christmas time. Dollar Tree, Walmart has big package and you just take a larger pin, put a hole right at the top and that larger pin makes a little bit bigger hole so you can see it and you just poke it through both layers. There we go. And then you just fold it up and kind of cross it over so it won't come loose. And then your ornament is complete. I hope you liked today's project, the shower curtain ornament. And if you did, be sure you click that subscription button. See you in the next one.